Good to see faces. I have no problem with any of you with wearing your face coverings, but it's kind of nice to see faces for a change. I still don't see many in the airport. And the airplanes, I'm re we're required to wear them. And uh, so you never really know who you're looking at. And you don't know if they're mad or if they're smiling, but you just, you just smile back, but you know they can't tell if you're smiling back, you know? <laughs> so you just kind of nod and look away. I'm going to, as Tim said, talk to you about what I see happening, what uh, what I am hearing, some of it will just be obviously from, from my heart and what, what, I've, what I've been hearing personally. Some of it will be from some dreams that I'll weave into this message that have been sent to me. I've never been in a season where, of prophetic whirlwind like this. I just, <clears throat> I, I, I weekly received two or three prophetic dreams about the nation that are very significant, not just encouraging, but filled with strategy. It's almost as though Holy Spirit is just saying, I'm, I'm not going to let you miss this. Yes. I'm going to speak to you in every possible way, even when you're asleep. Yeah. And so first one I'm going to mention was a dream that Chuck Pierce called me a few days ago and talked to me about a dream he had. He rarely has dreams about me. He, I don't know if Chuck is, has a lot of dreams. He's obviously a very significant, seasoned, mature prophet, but he called me and said, I need to share a dream with you that I had last night. And in the dream, he and I had um, felt led to go to Colorado for a meeting together. And as you know, we minister a good bit together. And we both um, lived in Colorado, Colorado Springs. And we were there when the prayer movement was, was birthed there. And so much of the prophetic movement and apostolic movement. So we... We arrived at the place of the gathering in the dream. We knew that uh, in this building, there was going to be an outpouring of Holy Spirit. It was almost as though we were, we were going into this building to experience what he's been talking about, that this great revival that's coming. And as we got out of our vehicles, I looked at Chuck and I said, Let's go down this path here. There was a path that led to the uh, building. And as we started to move toward that path, he stopped and he said, we can't go down that path. There are jackals down that path. And if we try to go that way, they will attack us. So we stopped and looked the other direction. There was a wheat field. And we decided, though there was no path, we had to make a path through the wheat field to get to the building. And that was the end of the dream. As we pondered this, we both knew clearly the Lord was saying, we are entering into a new era. And the fact that he sent us to Colorado in the dream was, was symbolic of the past the most recent outpouring of Holy Spirit that we were a part of. The birthing of the prayer movement and the birthing of the apostolic, uh, the restoration of that and prophetic in the earth. So much of it, the leadership flowed out of that place. And what he was saying to us was not that that was wrong or any part of it was wrong, but that we can't rest on that. We can't build by doing the same things, we've moved into a new era. And we're gonna to have, to, to have to walk in what that era was producing. We're gonna to have to 
use what God did on that path. But if we get stuck in that, religious demons will attack us. We'll get the way the way that you one way to lose or miss what God is about to do is to be so entrenched in what he did, the methods and the ways of yesterday that you can't find a new path. And so the Lord said to me, you're going to have to, you're going to have to walk in, not just the bridal anointing, not just the priestly anointing of intercession. You're going to have to walk in what I birthed through that, the ecclesia mandate. <clears throat> you're going to have to be the church. You're going to have to be apostles and prophets. You're going to have to tap into fully what I did and not just talk about it. You're going to have to do it. And if you don't, you'll get trapped in an old wineskin mentality and religious spirits will overtake you. This new path is going to lead through the harvest, the wheat fields. This one's not about the parking lot. It's about the wheat fields. It's not about a path to the building. It's a path through the harvest. We're about, we're about to see everything we've been crying out for. We're about to see the billion souls we've been prophesied, uh, prophesying about come into the kingdom. We're about to see entire nations transformed. I agree fully with what Tim just said. The earth has never seen anything like what's, what's coming now. This is not just a new season, it's a new era. It will, be, it will be broader, it will be larger in scope, it will be worldwide, nothing is gonna stop this. And so we're gonna to have to go down a new path. And in many ways, we're gonna to have to make a new path. Because we've never been this way before. We have to listen to what he says. Some of what this looks like another interesting dream sent to me just a few days ago. He said, I had a very intense dream. In this dream, it's centered around the large miracle room that they are seeking to complete at Glory of Zion in Texas. Chuck's headquarters, they have a meeting room that they use now for conferences and the congregational gatherings. It seats 1,500, I guess. But it's a big, uh, large, large building that they bought. And in the middle is a room that, when completed, will seat about 5,000. They've just been working on this over the last few years, paying as they go. They call it, and I don't really know why they chose this title, but they call it the Miracle Room. Maybe, maybe it's because of the visions or dreams similar to what I'm going to read to you here. But this dream is about that miracle room. And in this dream, this person says, Chuck and Dutch were in the room, and many others were in the room dressed in scrubs. They were like scrub nurses. Chuck and Dutch were there with great expectancy. The inside of the room was a miraculous environment, and from this miracle womb... He calls it now in the dream, not a miracle room, but a miracle womb. A birthing is about to take place. That's what Pentecost was. It was the birth of the church. It was the birth of a movement that is still taking place. From this miracle womb, many birthings were taking place as the womb birthed forth the miracles, those in scrubs begin to deliver the miracles to angels. The angels would move at the speed of light to deliver them. The miracle womb was constantly birthing. And he said, in the dream, there were body parts being birthed. Healings, miracles, releases of apostolic sending for people into their purpose and destiny. 
There are thousands upon thousands of people in the ecclesia right now that have been frustrated because they know they've not tapped in fully into who they are and what God has called them to do. But God has been preparing them in the hidden place and he's about to release them now into what he's been preparing them for. The miracles and the signs, wonders, miracles that we've been prophesying for a few years now that are coming, you're about to move into that. Some of you have never put your hand on a person and, and, and saw a literal miracle through your prayer with your very eyes. But I say to you, this is the season you're about to see that. You're about to, you're about to see that in ways that, that will astound you. You're about to see it at times when you didn't know it was going to happen. This is the hem of the garment season. This is when people will brush up against us and we're in the supermarket and we don't even know what's happening and they'll get up off the floor and say, what did you just do to me? Uh, that tumor just fell off of me or I can hear now or my body is healed. What did you do to me? This is a season unlike any we've ever experienced before. This is when we manifest who he is in ways we've never been able to manifest before. This is when Jesus will be seen around the world through his body, the ecclesia, the church, like he's never been seen before. People are gonna know it's not about us. It's all about him. You're gonna shake hands when, with someone. Yeah, we're gonna shake hands again. You're going to shake hands with somebody when you meet them. You're not even going to be thinking about spiritual things, but the power of God's going to hit them when you shake their hand. They're going to be delivered just because you touch them. Signs, wonders, miracles. Extraordinary miracles. Translation. You watch and see, you don't hear reports. People are going to get up in the morning and say, did I really go to that village and preach the gospel last night or was that a dream? I'm going to say this to you again. The earth has never seen anything like what's coming. And it's not because of who we are. And it's not, it's not just because we've asked and we want it. It's because of who he is and what he wants. He is very intense and he is very determined to bring in this harvest. Amen. And if you think any stronghold, any demon, any dictator, any king, any government agency, or any group of people is going to stop him, you are very, very wrong. Amen. 